Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm, I'm really happy. My name is Fabrice Etchier. So I'm here to introduce uh, this new session. We will have four uh, presentation. And it's, um, the goal is to try to show what we can do between public aquarium uh, and, um, and uh, fish base. And the first presentation will be by uh, Dominique Barthélemy, who's there, who has just arrived uh, with the train and is doing, you know, back and forth from Brest to Paris just for us. So thank you very much, Dominique, for being here, <laughs> just for that. And uh, is the president of UK, so all the aquarium in France. So we will uh, make the first part of the presentation. And first time ever for me, I will do you know the second part so we'll see how we, how it goes so dominic you you can go please okay thank you good afternoon so together with fabrice we will explain you what is the french union of uh, aquarium curators and uh, um, the activities of this association <laughs> including uh, breeding activities for fish and uh, how the, these curators and public aquariums could help to improve the knowledge about uh, fish on fish bars, fish bays. Uh, this one, sir. Okay. So at the beginning of the 20th century, the first uh, public aquariums were mainly intended to amaze their visitors by showing them aquatic fauna and flora. Nowadays, it's no longer possible to present animals to the public without a real mission to raise awareness of the conservation of natural ecosystems. With more than 7 million hundred, uh, uh, visit, uh, seven, uh, uh, 700 million visitors per year worldwide, aquariums have become a major actors in public awareness of conservation. Furthermore, the expertise developed by public aquariums positions them as a key partners in research related to aquatic env environments. Faced with environmental and societal pressures, they are also developing a unique know-how in the reproduction and breeding of the species they maintain in order to reduce, reduce uh, removal of animals from the wild. Through these actions, public aquariums have also a leading role in influencing uh, the trade in aquatic ornamental species. So, uh, next one. Yes. So, the French uh, Union of, public, uh, of Aquarium Curators brings together the curators of the main public aquariums in France and also in Belgium we should say more uh, French-speaking curators than French curators, actually. Since 1987, uh, this association has been working toward a high level of animal welfare and expertise in the maintenance of aquatic species. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, exchanges within the UK concern the main goals and missions of public aquariums to inform and educate the public, uh, to ensure a high level of animal welfare, to ensure also the scientific rigor of information given in the, the aquariums, also helping animals in distress, uh, like uh, several aquariums have also uh, host also care centers for uh, wildlife such as seals, uh, sea turtles as well also and of course to participate in scientific research and uh, envi envi environmental um, conservation. Since the creation of public uh, aquariums, aquarists have been committed to reproducing the species presented. A recent census at the UK shows that more than 120 species of fish have been reproduced in the two last years. Of course, for a long time, freshwater teleost were the first to be reproduced. Today, most of the, the ornamental, ornamental trade in freshwater fish is from breeding, actually. And within the UK, 34 species are concerned in the last two years 
but this is uh, this figure is probably uh, underestimated. The remarkable work of the Besançon Museum is shown here uh, as part of a program to reintroduce Zinger as per. Okay, next. With the appearance of very large aquariums in the in the 2000s, the breeding of marine sharks on rays has developed greatly. And uh, it's likely that in the near future, it will no longer be necessary to take specimens from the wild for public aquariums. And also for freshwater uh, rays uh, of the genus Potamotrigon, uh, they are also commonly uh, reproduced in aquariums in France and Belgium. And for most, the most recent sector uh, concerns marine terrorists. For a very long time, breeding of this species was limited to clownfish and a few spe easy species such as uh, Bangai uh, cardinal fish. One of the main difficulties for many species is the small size of the larvae at birth, often much, much less than five millimeters. This, this requires the production of small live prails such as copepods. For some years now, UK members have been mobilizing and sharing their knowledge to make progress in this area. And the results are quite impressive, I think, with new species being reproduced every month now for a total of uh, 52 species in the last two years. And among them uh, are some emblematic species uh, such as, uh, such as uh, angelfish. Oh, uh, yeah, like angelfish and uh, like pomac the French angel angelfish like uh, Pomacanthus paru and also uh, centropige and uh, many other species. And finally, temperate uh, teleosta also reproduced more and more, especially uh, seahorses, uh, the two species we, we can find in France, and, uh, but also other species like uh, caprosaper uh, on the right. Okay, and then I will let Fabrice continue. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dominique. Sorry, we, we sent, I sent the, the new version of the PowerPoint uh, yesterday night, and <laughs> it was the old version here. Anyway, that's why, that's why there were some numbers. So they're reproducing now uh, 126 species, so over 100 species. So we can say that the public aquarium are very dynamic. They are producing a lot of data. They are reproducing a lot of species. But when you go on the scientific part, when you go here, it's uh, an overview that have been made recently by Pui and uh, colleagues. And as you can see, it's uh, an overview of the research of the article, the scientific <laughs> article that are published. And unfortunately, France is just there. In other words, uh, all the, the data that are produced in um, in public aquarium, you cannot find them in, in, a, in a research uh, community. So this is not the time uh, and to discuss the reasons for that. But the question is, how can we make all the data, uh, pictures, uh, data on a reproduction length, uh, all this available for the scientific community? So one way is to work with fish base. And actually, this is uh, something that you have discussed for a long period of time. And this is something that we are trying now to, to, to do uh, in a stronger and, um, and sustainable way. So when you, we started three years ago discussing, I would say, uh, more concretely about that, I look at, and actually there's already some, um, some links between uh, fish base and public aquarium. So if you go in some in some uh, public aquarium, you will find uh, this, and there are some QR codes, and those, if you flash them, you will go on fish base. So there's already uh, links between fish base and public aquarium. So as always, there's a lot of end users of fish base, I would say. Um, there's uh, also uh, a presentation that will be made by Mary just after me on the use of fish base for uh, public education. So I will not go in uh, in details because she will present that just after me and so now we go back to fish base as i told you there are already some um, some trials of developing links between public aquarium and fish base 
And actually, if you go on FishBase, uh, you will see that page, and that page uh, is uh, uh, regroups uh, 39 uh, um, and there's three of them is from uh, from France. Actually, this is the first one. That's where we're going tonight. So that's good that it's online already. But there's actually, and again, it's not a critic, but actually, there's not there's not any information. So basically. The thing was that, okay, uh, we can try to make a sustainable and close uh, link between fish base and, and, um, and public aquarium. The question is how? And so the goal is to develop a strong and sustainable collaboration. So it's not a one shot. This is something that we want to be uh, in for the long run. So three years ago, I worked with uh, students asking uh, colleagues in public aquarium, whether they will be, they would agree to work with fish base. And most of them uh, say yes, and they agree to collaborate, to give some time. And for most people, time is, you know, the hardest to give because they have already many things to do. Share a minimum of data, so we, ha we will show what we can share. Share pictures, a list of species. The idea would be that if you go on fish base, you know exactly where the fish are. So w you can have breeding programs uh, that could be settled based on fish base. And I think, and we do think now, we need what we call a fish base representative. It means that within public aquarium, within the personnel, you should have someone saying that, okay, part of your job, a couple of hours per week, for instance, would be to do the job that we would like you to do. So now we, we will ask, uh, for the fish base representative, what are your tasks? The first one will be that we will have a list of people, and uh, I would say at least one in the, each aquarium. So it will be the contact of fish base, so we know exactly who's in charge of what. Be in contact with other fish base UK representatives. So UK has uh, one year, uh, each year has um, an annual meeting, of course, each year, annual meeting, so it's going to be next month. So we're going to talk about this uh, presentation and what we want to do. So they will uh, talk to each other, uh, provide an update, a list of species and pictures. So you know exactly if you're going uh, next month, for instance, in, uh, we, we have a, a presentation of Aquarium of Nancy after. So you know exactly what's uh, you know, inside uh, this, this aquarium. And this is incredibly uh, important, we can start collecting data in a certain format and start sharing those data online so that we know, for instance, after one year, how many data were uh, put online and who used them. And this will show how important um, um, public aquarium are for uh, research. So for me, it's endless application. It's more or less like fish base. We know that fish base was, was developed for something, but 30 years after, everybody's using fish base, so it's endless application. So I just took three of them to illustrate. First of all, uh, public aquarium hosts hundreds or thousands of species, so they can work or bring data on, on fish that nobody <laughs> works on. Most of people will work on, you know, on on zebra fish, for instance, or on a couple of, of fish. So here, they host a lot of species. So they will produce unique data that will be useful for all applications. Global warming, uh, we saw a presentation on invasive species, and so on. Second one, so I put that for Daniel, of, for, of course, because you will have some uh, you know, data for kind of weird species or species for which you don't have any other possibility of having those information. And I put also one example, Guillaume is there, so I was stuck for 15 years, I was un not able to, 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 to have a clue of doing that. So with Guillaume and a colleague, we produced uh, a method to compare the biological development, the patterns uh, between early life stages of fish. So I will not go in details, of course, but you understand that we have many, many application of that. So. I will not go in, in, in into details because Dominique will present for um, another Dominique, will present Dominique Chardin, will present for Museum Aquarium of Nancy. So we try 
I don't really like the term leader. I prefer the proof of concept aquarium. It means how can public aquarium can work with fish base. So we have to start with one public aquarium and start with something. Dominic will present that in details, but we can share pictures, list of species, and so on. And so this is exactly what he will present, the onset of collaboration between fish base and, and uh, public aquarium. So to conclude, I think in the past three years, we have, we have developed a strong bond between public aquarium, um, fish base, and my university, especially in terms of the students, because we, uh, we have a lot of students that are working after in the public aquarium. So each year I'm talking about this project, and so they know this project when they're going to in internship or when they're gonna work afterwards. So we try to look for funding because we need money of any project. So it's really hard. So there's, I think, two way of selling it. Everybody's speaking about, you know, citizen science, open science, database all the time. But you know exactly how hard it is to find money just for that. So either we sell it for itself, that would be a perfect world, or we sell it for uh, asking or answering different questions. So we, we will try to do both. And to conclude, so in we started, again, you started that way a long time ago, but we restarted, I would say, a couple of years ago. So we have some meetings, some survey with the students. In 2021, this is what Dominique will present, what we can call prove a study. So we made some communication. Hopefully we will have at least two or three articles from Public Aquarium in the special issue. Again, if you want to publish articles, you're more than welcome. Hopefully, but this is the uh, Public Aquarium that will discuss that. Try to have at least one fish-based representative per aquarium. Let's say that we start with five or six Public Aquarium next year, and then we, we go on. We, we, we discuss with people how, we, how it goes. And I think we should have a common goal, uh, like a special issue or a common book, uh, showing what's, uh, uh, what is done in terms of research uh, in public aquarium and how this is so important for the scientific community to tackle a uh, lot of issues. Thank you very much for your attention.